following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, Cap Steve for Botest.com, and today I'm going to be conducting a sea trial on a boat that brings the trawler experience to a wider audience by being smaller and therefore more affordable. It's the Swift 30. Let's take a look as we get out on the water. Let's start by getting underway and getting right into the performance numbers. The Swift Trawler 30 has a length overall of 34 feet 1 inch, a beam of 11 feet 7 inches, and with the prop nestled into a tunnel, a draft of 3 feet 5 inches. With an empty weight of 13,244 pounds, full fuel and three people on board, we estimated our test weight at 14,969 pounds. With a single 370 horsepower Volvo Penta D6 powering our test boat, we reached a top speed of 26.4 miles per hour at 3640 RPM. Best crews seemed to come in at 3,000 RPM and 19.2 miles per hour. At that speed, we measured a 13 gallon per hour fuel burn that translated into a range of 253 miles. However, being a trawler first and foremost, we'd be remiss if we didn't report a displacement speed. So, at 1250 RPM, she was running at 6.9 miles per hour with a 1.4 gallon per hour fuel burn, and she could keep that up for 843 miles. All of this while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 190 gallon total fuel capacity. As for handling, this is really a fun boat to drive, and while we try to stay neutral, it's hard not to feel like a kid in a candy store on this boat. She handles so well and it's so easy to drive that her comfort level puts anyone at ease. She has the interior look, feel and aura of a much larger boat, but her handling is still a roughly 31 and a half foot cruiser that is still easily managed. While she's squarely marked as a coastal cruiser, she's probably well suited for limited offshore work as well, although our comm test day couldn't validate that. But the fact remains, she's still a swift and they all take whatever is dished out quite nicely. In fact, she carries a CE rating of B8, making her approved for operating offshore with winds up to 40 knots and significant seas to 13 feet. Safety is enhanced by her 4 feet of freeboard at the stern and 4 feet 8 inches at the bow. What we did find was a boat that responds well to the helm, even at low speed, so she can be operated as if she has a large rudder. Turns are brisk and sporty, so getting heavy-handed could possibly get uncomfortable for guests, but for when the going gets rough, that aggressive response will come in handy, especially when tracking down a following sea. At the dock, she's a pussycat. She'll have minor steering in reverse, which any single engine handler will tell you is a valuable tool. Line her up, back her down into a slip with the wheel hard over, and a shot of forward with a little bow thrust will have her walking sideways right up to the dock, pretty as you please. It's one of the easiest single engine boats to operate that we've been on. Well, now that we're back at the dock, let's take a look at some of her operational features. At the helm, we've got rocker switches over to the left-hand side, easily identifiable by icons. On the panel itself, fuel gauge, rudder indicator, bubble penta EVC, and the digital ignitions. Front and center is the tachometer. Front and center, a 15-inch hybrid touch Raymarine display. Up above, the bow thruster control trim tabs just ahead of the digital engine control so they can be manipulated while we still have our hands on the throttle and of course the engine control has its host of optional features available. Beautiful wrapped stainless steel 24 inch destroyer wheel, cable driven to the rudder, just below footrest and take a look at this. For the short captains we can make it into a step at a little bit more of a comfort level. This step also finds its usefulness when we're not using the bolster as a leaning post. I'm happy to see that the basic needs like drink holders weren't left out of the equation. These are molded in and notice just ahead, stainless steel hinges, this entire helm panel can be lifted up for access underneath. That's a particularly attractive feature for the owner operator that will be doing a lot of the maintenance. I also like that the helm seat is double wide and yes, it is adjustable. Of course, where do we put the things that we need at the helm? The VHF, the binoculars? Well, two storage solutions. One right next to the helm in this drawer, and the other just underneath. Operating at night, we've got a switch at the helm. Gives us red light. We've got a two-piece windshield, 42 inches by 26 inches, both with wipers, washers underneath. There's a side door to the helm that latches into multiple positions so you can have as much or as little air as you would like flowing through the helm deck and nothing is more convenient 
then this side door to the bulwarks for when you're operating single-handedly. Now let's take a look at the Flying Bridge helm. On the Flying Bridge, the console is a bit modest, but still very functional. Nine inch hybrid touch Raymarine display, rocker switches over to the left for just the anchor lights and the horn, bow thruster, the digital engine control over to the right hand side, steering wheel, stainless steel, five spoke, and we've also got the tachometer and the EVC display. Now, all of the railings going around the Flybridge deck can be ordered as quick release so that they can be removed. Why would you want to do such a thing? Well, if you're going to use this as a great loop boat, you've got to fit underneath some of the bridges. So by taking out those rails, and look at this. Lowering the console and latching it, you can now fit under more bridges. And I like how to get the console to collapse. It's a pull towards you not a push down, so that when you're getting up out of the seat, you can still use the console for support. Now, while there's certainly a safety factor to facing the ladder as you're going down, on the Swift Trawler 30, it's also comfortable not facing the ladder because the hatch is laid out to provide the safety that you're looking for. Base power is a Volvo Penta 300. Here we have the D6 370, and this leads to a straight shaft. Inch and a half thick sound reducing foam is under the deck and engine hatch, keeping the engine noise between 68 decibels and a conversational 85 decibels. Just ahead we can see the aluminum fuel tank, 190 gallons or 720 liters. While at the dock, we have two 30 amp connections, one for air conditioning, one for the ship's electrical systems. When we're away from the dock, it's all controlled by a 7.5 kW generator that is housed inside a hatch in the center of the cockpit deck. The hatch is easy to lift with the help of two gas assist struts. It's gasketed all the way around. The opening is guttered, leading to a drain taking water overboard. This compartment also gives us plenty of storage space. Just inside the salon doorway, we have the controls for switching from shore power to generator power, inverter controls, the Onan generator start-stop switch, battery and water tank condition, and 110 volt breakers just inside this panel. The main battery switches are located just underneath the companionway steps. Now the Swift Trawler 30 has an asymmetrical layout. The side decks are 18 and a half inches on the starboard side, nine inches to the port side. Nice high bulwarks keep the safety factor comfortable. 36 inches on the side deck and as we come forward, the rail height drops that safety factor down to only 32 inches. Fully forward, we've got a Lumar windlass leading out to a stainless anchor roller. I'd like to see some method up here for securing both the chain and the rope road. Over to the starboard side, we have access to the road underneath, plus the remote control. Well, clearly, the design team at Beneteau have continued to make a great handling boat that brings the trawler experience within reach of more people. And that's my look at the Swift 30 from Beneteau. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.